Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure. Suspense. Mystery. And music. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the Mellow Men, and an all-star cast. And now, here to greet you with a song and a story are Roy and Dale. Next Cali Road, stop crying. I'll come back to you some sunny day. Well, good evening, folks. Greetings again to the whole family. That song, Next to Cali Road, reminds me of a trip Dale and Pat and I made a while back. We've been looking around for a real isolated guest ranch where we could take it easy for a few days. And the Rancho El Dolby looks just right. It's down in a desert country about 20 miles this side of the Mexican border and the town of Mexicali. Before we got there, Dale made me promise that I'd do nothing but rest and relax. And when we checked in, Mr. Wilson, the owner of the rancho, guaranteed that we'd have a nice, quiet vacation. Well, the next morning we got up early and decided to give the horses a little exercise before breakfast. Did you ever see so much sand in all your life? It ain't nothing but miles and miles of... Miles and miles. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to keep and quiet and isolation. We couldn't have picked a better spot. Hey, Roy. Yeah? How about turning back? Huh? Stomach yelling for breakfast. Okay, Pat, let's go. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Hold up. Huh? Well, what's the matter? What is it, Roy? Well, I'm not sure. It, it looks like a man's body. Body? Where? Over there in the sand. Oh, no. Let it be a mirage. Please let it be a mirage. It's no mirage. Is he? He sure is, Pat. That isn't all. He looks kind of strange, Roy. He should. This man was frozen to death. A man could freeze to death out here in the middle of the desert. Well, the desert isn't very hot at night. No, but it doesn't get cold enough to freeze. Hey, Roy, there's something else nice on him. It'll all be gone in a few minutes. Yeah, I see. That proves one thing for sure. What? He must have been brought here sometime during the night. How do you suppose he got here? That's what I'd like to know. I wonder if he has any papers on him that'll tell us who he is. I'll take a look. Now, Roy, remember, we're on a vacation. Let the sherry find out what happened. Okay, Dale. How do you reckon whoever brought him here did it without leaving any tracks, Dale? They must have wiped out their tracks when they left so they wouldn't be followed, Pat. Did you find anything on him, Roy? No, oh, his pockets were empty. No, we'd better get back to the Rancho El Dobie so I can call the sheriff. <laughs> How do you do, sir? I hope your ride this morning gave you an appetite. Yeah, it sure did. I could eat a raw bear. Fine. Uh, how's this table here? This will be fine, Mr. Wilson. Huh? Uh, will Mr. Rogers be joining you? Yes. He's in the lobby making a phone call to the sheriff. The sheriff? Well, why? Is something wrong? I found a dead man out on the desert. No. Yes, an very mysterious cucum circuit. Or, uh, thickum Really? Yeah, he's frozen to death. Frozen? In the desert? Yeah. Let's not talk about it. Okay. Um, how about breakfast, Mr. Wilson? Oh, certainly. I'll have Clara take your order. Oh, Clara? Yes, Mr. Wilson. Uh, the Rogers table as soon as you can. Be right there. Oh, good morning, Mr. Wilson. Good morning. Oh. Miss Evans just told me about the mystery you uncovered this morning. Well, it wouldn't be a mystery very long if Roy wasn't on a vacation. What'd the sheriff say, Roy? He thought I was joking at first, but I guess he finally believed me. I told him we left the trail and marked the place where we found the man. He's going out to investigate. Well, the sheriff's a good man. Oh, excuse me. Someone's in the lobby. Morning, folks. How do you do? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, what's good today? Oh, we have a special treat for breakfast, Mr. Brady. Oh? What's that? Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe? I don't see him advertised on the bill of fare. Well, Mr. Wilson brought several back to the market this morning. Well, I'll start with one of them. Then some cereal, ham and eggs... Maybe an order of French toast, 
And I order a grit and harmony, coffee. Come in. Rogers? Yes, sir. Rogers, my name is Bradley. I'm a special investigator with the Border Patrol. I wonder if I can have a few minutes of your time. Sure, come in. The sheriff told me you found the body of Emmanuel Lopez this morning. Is that who he was? Yes, he was one of our best men. He worked on the cover for us on the other side of the border. I see. The medical report says he was frozen to death. How they did it, we don't know. They? The smuggling ring. We've been after them for over a year. Last night, Lopez sent us a message by shortwave saying he was coming across with information that would tell us who the leader of the gang really is. Well, obviously, he didn't make it. Do you think the gang learned he was a spy? That's right. They're smart and dangerous. Uh, Mr. Rogers, we understand you're down here strictly on a vacation. Yes, I am. Well, now, would you consider extending your vacation to the other side of the border? What did you have in mind? You'll just continue to act like you're on a vacation. You know, enjoy yourself. Buy the usual things, rapes, souvenirs, and uh, diamonds. Diamonds? Yes, that's right. Now, you see, we're sure that the contact of the smuggling gang is a man named Popescu, a Romanian. He poses as a poor refugee forced to sell the family jewels. Aren't the diamonds he sells real? Oh, well, they're real enough. They're only worth about a tenth of what he'll ask for them. I see. And you think I might learn who the boss of the gang is if I bought some diamonds from this man? Well, no, no, not quite. But if you were interested in buying, say, uh, oh, ten thousand dollars worth, providing you were guaranteed they could somehow get them past customs at the border, well, Popescu might take you to someone who could give you that guarantee. I see. I admit it's not much to go on, but uh, it would at least give us another link in the chain. Well, I'll have to ask Dale, Mister Bradley. I, I promised her I wouldn't. Well, do now a thing. that wouldn't be wise. You are people who know that you're helping us the better. But. If I don't tell her, she's lovely. She'll lovely. think you're just in Mexico seeing the sights. So will Mr. Brady. Now, the less they know, the healthier it'll be. And so what happened to Emmanuel Lopez? Well, Dale, aren't you glad we decided to take in Mexicali? I certainly am. Those costumes the natives wear are the most colorful I've ever seen. They're just... Uh, hi, folks. Hi, Pat. Hi. Oh, Pat, you look like you bought out the store. Oh, I didn't buy so much. Just a zavapi and a pair of hurry cheeses. Er, um, who are you? Uh, Mexican <laughs> chew. We know, Pat. Have a seat. Thanks. <laughs> What's over here, folks? Senor, senorita. Photographer for souvenir. Hey, Roy. Just let's have our picture taken. Okay. Oh, gracias, senor Roger. You know my name? Oh, si, sí, senor. It is because of my little brother, Pedro. He's a great, uh, how you say, great fan of yours. Oh? Uh, please, you all come closer together, see? Like this? Ah, bueno. Ah, oh, my. Ah, hold it. Ah, bueno, bueno. Your picture will be ready in a moment. Okay, miss. Uh, maybe you can do me a favor. Si, sí, senor. Do you happen to know a, a good jeweler in this town? I'd like to see about buying some diamonds. Diamonds? Well, senor, I, I do not know such a one. Perhaps if I inquire, I will see. Roy, what do you want to buy diamonds for? Oh, I've heard you can get some real bargains down here. Pardon me, Mr. Rogers? Yes? Permit me to introduce myself. My name is Popescu. <laughs> Rogers, I have a proposition that I believe may interest you. Oh? Well, sit down, Mr. Popescu. Oh, thank you. This is Dale Evans and Pat Brady. Uh, Mr. Popescu. Hey, great. How do you do? How something. Mr. Rogers, I will come right to the point. I'm in need of uh, several thousand dollars. Oh? Unfortunately, it's taking much longer to acquire the visa to enter your country than I anticipate. I see. Uh, because of this, I'm forced to part with some of my family heirlooms. Heirloom? Well, why would you want any old looms for your hair? Oh, Pat. Go ahead, Mr. Professor. Uh, what kind of heirlooms? Diamonds, Mr. Rogers. Beautiful, absolutely perfect stuff. Now, I'm 
forced by poverty to sell these same wall famous genuine perfect blue white diamonds at tremendous bargain. Are you interested, Mr. Rogers? Well, uh, I'd like to see the stones. Uh, do you have them with you? <laughs> no, Mr. Rogers. I would be risking my life to carry such a treasure abroad from my small hotel room. But if you would care to accompany me there, it's only a short walk from the cantina. Okay, uh... I'll be back in a few minutes, folks. Good boy. Let's go, Mr. Popescu. Here you are, Mr. Arthur. Now, do you not agree with me that these stones have a truly magnificent luster? They sure sparkle. What do you think they're worth? This country next to nothing but in the United States. They will be worth perhaps thirty, forty thousand dollars that much, huh? So that is conservative estimate. However, you may have the stones for only 10000 10000 Well, that certainly sounds like a bargain, but there's a matter of paying duty on them. That would cost me at least another 10000 Now, sir, Mr. Popescu, I, by the time I got them back into the United States, they'd cost me... Oh, two... Excuse me, Mr. Arthur, but I do not remember saying anything about paying duty on the stones. Well, how could I avoid it? And what would you say, Mr. Rogers, if I guarantee to have the stones delivered to you in the United States duty-free? Then I'd certainly be interested in buying them. Good. Good. Come with me. Where to now? It's only short distance, near the freight yard. I will introduce you to a man who will see that you receive the stones safely across the border. should have been back by now. Yeah, I know. Oh, here comes the girl with our picture. I wonder if she knows where that Mr. Popescu lives. Senorita, Senor Brady, your picture is very nice. Thank uh, you. Uh, quarter, uh, quarter, um, uh, how much? One dollar, senor. Oh, here you are. Oh, miss. See? Si? Do you know the man that Roy left here with? Mr. Popescu? Mr. Popescu? No, senorita, I do not know him. Well, you saw him sitting at our table, didn't you? No, senora, I saw no one at your table. But he came over here right after Roy asked you about buying some diamonds. Yeah, it looked like you sent him. I'm sorry, please excuse me, but I don't know why you're not telling the truth, miss. But if Roy's been swindled into buying some phony diamonds... I think we ought to tell the police, Dale. That's a good idea. No, please wait. Will you tell us where Roy is? Please, senorita, I cannot. Mr. Popesco, he would be very angry. Okay, Pat, call the police. No... All right. I will do it. Come, I will take it to Senor Popescu's hotel. Senor Morales is here, Mr. Rogers. I see. Hello, baby. It's me, Popescu. What do you want? There is... Someone with me, a gentleman with much money. He wants to talk business to you. Oh, come in. Mr. Rogers, this is Senor Morales. Mucho gusto. No, Senor, what can I do for you? Well, I might buy some diamonds for Mr. Popescu, providing we can get together. Oh, excuse me. Don't worry, Mr. Rogers. Senor Morales will make all the necessary arrangements. He has uh, connections. No, senor, uh, you were uh, saying... I was saying that Mr. Popescu wants to sell me some diamonds. Oh, I uh, see, and uh, you wish me to bring them to you across the border. Well, uh, yes, if you think he can do it, but I guess... Oh, oh Robert, are you crazy? Why did you hit him with a piece of pipe, baby? Of course, baby, he's a spy. What? You're a fool, Popescu. Rogers was sent here by the border patrol to trap us. How do you know? The man at the door, he was sent by the boss, he told me. So what do we do with him now? Same thing I did with the other spy. We'll send him across the border, and when they find him, he'll be in the middle of the desert, frozen to death. This train goes across the border, David? Say it leaves in a few minutes. Here, this is the car we're using this trip. 
Refrigerated car. How cold it gets in there, baby? Cold enough to freeze him. I'll open the door. Get in, Popescu. I'll lift Rogers up to you. Hi, baby. It's cold in here. Okay. Here he comes. Got him. Uh, drag him back inside the car. Okay, baby. Is far enough? See, that's fine. So long, baby. Sorry, but you know too much. No, no, no. no. Mr. Roger. Mr. Roger. Yeah, Professor. I hear you. I did not know. Believe me. I believe you. We're going to freeze to death. We won't be able to stand this cold much longer. How far is it to the border? For us, too far. We'll be ice before then. I'm getting so sleepy. Well, don't give in to it. Listen to me. It's no use. We haven't got a chance. Don't give up, Professor. You... Try to keep moving around. But there's no room. There's so many melons. Hey, we're slowing down. The train's slowing down. So soon. It can't be. Help! 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 In here! Help! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen. It's only a dog. What's how can he be? What's that bullet? That door will open, and the head of the smuggling ring will expect to find Popescu and myself frozen to death. The head of the smuggling ring? You mean it isn't Pupaiku or uh, uh, Poppy Cooper or... No, Pat, and it isn't Morales either. I'll bet I know. Who? Rose. Rose? Yeah. The girl that took our picture. Her name's Rose. They call her Mexicana Rose. I don't think it's a girl. After all, she took us to Popescu's hotel and from there to Senor Morales. Now, if it hadn't been for Rose, Roy would still be locked up in this car, freezing to death. No, it isn't Rose. Oh, now, Roy, stop playing games and tell us. Well, I'm not absolutely sure, but I think it's... Quiet now. The train's slowing down. Okay, get ready. Okay, boys. Get under those cantaloupes and dig out our shipment. Just stay where you are, boys. Roger. Don't reach, Wilson. Don't reach. My hands are cold, not frozen. You should have given you the reservation at my ranch, Rogers. I knew you spelled trouble. That's not the only mistake you made, Wilson. You shouldn't have been serving cantaloupe for breakfast. The only place you could have gotten them that time of the morning was out of a refrigerated freight car. That's the method you've been using for smuggling and for freezing people in the middle of the desert. The biggest mistake I made was in believing that you were on a vacation. I was. Some vacation, like a jockey taking a horseback ride on his day off. That's right, Mr. Roy Rogers, and when you're ready, we'll start home to the good old double R bar. It's very peaceful and quiet, and we can get rested up from our vacation. And folks, that's a story I'm always reminded of whenever I hear the song, Mexicali Rose. Mexicali Rose, some crying. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
sin consuelo. Cada noche ya yo cantaré. Deja tus hermosos ojos. Deja que yo saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. You've been listening to The Roy Rogers Show, starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the Mellow Men, and an all-star cast. Be sure to be with us again next week at the same time. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.